So now I want to give you a uh, visual representation of those same six addressing modes. We have the six addressing modes listed here, implied, immediate, register, base, PC relative, and pseudo direct. So uh, implied, as the first one, takes the operand, which specifies the instruction, and uses that to tell you where the instruction or where the operand is. Right? The opcode specifies the operand, and someplace in the machine we get that information. Right? It's not in the instruction itself, it's somewhere in the, instruction, in the information in the machine. Uh, for example, if we say syscall, we don't say syscall v0, we just say syscall, and somewhere in the machine we find out that v0 is used to tell the operation system, the operating system, um, what syscall we're asking for. If we do jump and link, um, this says somewhere in the machine we're going to specify that we want to store the return or the program counter, the current value of the program counter, in the register specified as the return address so that we can get back after our jump. Right? If we look at how jump and link is formulated, jump and link is on our instruction sheet here, jump and link, right? and we do a regular jump, and then in the notes it says the return address gets program counter plus four if we're using the and link variant of jump. What's the return address? Well, if we look at our register file, we say that RA number 31 is the return address. That instruction, or that register, has to be specified somewhere because we just say JAL. We don't say JALRA or JAL31. The RA is implied or implicit in the instruction itself. If we look at our computer, we can see how that's happened. Right here, the number 31 is used for jump and link instructions. That's all it's used for. But we need to specify it in the hardware itself uh, because we don't specify it in the instruction. So that's implied. Somewhere in the machine itself, the operand can get found. It's not in the instruction. It's nowhere else. It's just in the machine, in the hardware itself. Immediate addressing says that in the immediate field of the instruction is the data we're interested in. We might have to sign extend it. In fact, almost always we sign extend it. But that immediate value gets transitioned directly into the operand that we're interested in. In a register format, the, um, the, the instruction specifies a register. That specification is used to look up a value in the register file, and then the data is the operand. Then in base plus offset addressing, we use a register as the base address. We use the immediate field as a constant offset. We add those two together, and we look up the result in the memory, and that is our operand. We use that for loading and storing, and it's like I say, a four-part process. First, we have to take the register specified by the instruction. We look it up in the register file. Then we add the offset to that. Then we look it up in the memory, and that's our operand. PC relative, again, very similar, but instead of looking up a register in the register file, we just take the program counter. So it's actually one step less complicated than the base plus offset addressing mode. The program counter is added to an offset then the, uh, that produces a memory address. In this case, it's an instruction memory, so it's a little bit different, but then the uh, operand is our next instruction. And then finally, pseudo direct. Uh, direct would mean that the uh, opcode would be, or the, the full instruction would be in our instruction. The address of the, of the new instruction would be in our instruction, but instead we have most of the address uh, in our instruction, we have to tack on the top bit of the program counter, and that's used to look up the next instruction in memory. So again, here, for these two, the operand is memory. For these, the operand is data. Sorry, these, the operand is the next instruction or the program counter. Here, the operand is just data. Uh, and in both of these cases, we look up the new instruction in instruction memory. In this case, we look up the new instruction in data memory, or the new value in data memory. But in all of these cases, these are the, the six, and only six, ways that we can get access to information using our MIPS computer.